Hey, ladies and gentlemen. So 2019's over and we didn't have that many remarkable AAA games this year. We had a Star Wars game, a new Kojima thing, some Not Souls, some Pokemans, and a couple of shooters, but overall, not a lot of big studio action to be had. And that's why about midway through the year, I decided to give indie games a try. And boy, am I glad I did, because in 2019, I've discovered some of the most incredible games. Games that could only be made by a smaller team of developers who could take risks without worrying about how it would affect sales, who could drive home a singular vision or tell an interesting story. As with any industry, not all of these games succeeded in their intent, but many of them do. And of the amazing independent games that exist, some excel to such an extent that they create their own subgenre. One such game is Crypt of the Necrodancer. Now, you might be asking yourself, Who is this James C. Drone fellow? What with his opinions and such? Well, you see... My name's James and I play video game... Mom! Go away! <sighs> and here's what I think about, what I think about, what I think about... Crypt of an Acrodancer. Now while I didn't have the pleasure of playing it until mid-2019, Crypt of the Necrodancer was actually released back in 2015 by Brace Yourself Games. The game combines two disparate genres, roguelike and rhythm games. And today, I'd like to discuss how it utilizes elements of both genres to form a new, completely unique gaming experience. A few of this game's aspects that I'll be primarily discussing today are its basic gameplay and movement mechanics, its boss fights, level design, narrative depth, music, and the way that it facilitates player agency through choice. Now the main goal in Crypt of the Necrodancer is to fight your way down through the four zones of the Necrodancer's dungeon lair and, ultimately, defeat the Necrodancer himself. It's a simple premise, and it acts as a familiar narrative foundation upon which the game's gameplay can juxtapose its odder facets. You see, while Crypt of the Necrodancer's gameplay bears echoes from classics such as the original Legend of Zelda, it differentiates itself through its central motif, dancing. Now every aspect of this game perfectly composites that core idea, but the first one that I'd like to discuss is its gameplay. In Crypt of the Necrodancer, you can only move in time with the beat of the music, as displayed by the pulsing heart at the bottom of the screen. And the only skill you absolutely need is a sense of rhythm, because not only do you move to the beat of the music, but so do all of your enemies. You move into a monster, you damage them, and if they move into you, they damage you. Additionally, different types of monsters have different movement patterns. This creates absolutely awesome fight scenarios in which the player has to understand how a sizable number of monsters moves at once and has to skillfully fight around and into said monsters to survive in a flashy dancing duel. Now, this is simplified by the fact that the player can only go in four directions. However, the ever-increasing quantity and strength of enemies means that the player will never be in want of a fun, challenging fight. Now, while it's true that the game makes you move to the beat of the music, there are several gameplay mechanics I've not yet discussed that make you want to move to the beat of the music. The first of these being that, if you remain in time with the tune, the ground turns into a disco dance floor, which is just a really fun visual. Secondly, and more mechanically significant, the longer you stay in beat with the music, the bigger your coin multiplier gets, up to a maximum of times four. Now this is actually really important because the coins you get in this game from killing monsters let you buy various adventurers tools from the game's item shops. Each level has a new merchant from whom you can purchase three randomly generated pieces of gear, and the items you get can be anything from new boots that let you walk unaffected over hazardous terrains like tar and hot coals, to various weapons that modify your attack range and damage, plus innumerable other items besides that have their own categories and range of effects. Now, for those of you familiar with the roguelike genre, Many of the gameplay facets I've described are nothing particularly extraordinary or new to the genre, but they're so satisfyingly integrated into the context of dancing that they feel completely fresh and unique. So in summary, you kill monsters to get gold to buy gear to kill more monsters. It's really fun, simple, and solid from a gameplay perspective, 
with enough challenge to it to keep players actively engaged, and it creates a really nice preparatory buildup to fighting bosses. As I previously mentioned, the crypt has four zones that the player has to fight through, and each zone is divided into three sub-levels with mini-bosses plus a boss level. Now, the mini-boss fights are alright, though pretty easy once you figure out their movement patterns, but the big boss fights are absolutely awesome! This is due in part to the boss stage's unique gimmicks and their challenging attack combos, but it mostly comes down to the player themselves. You see, by the time you get to a boss, a reasonably experienced player like me, for instance, will generally be armed to the teeth with great armor, a powerful weapon, some spells, and a couple other buffing items, but also pretty low on health. And even if you've got some life left, bosses can often deal heavy, damaging attacks that destroy a player and what's more, if you lose to a boss, you lose all of your hard-fought gear and have to replay through that zone's three levels to get another crack at them. Now this I could see as a point of contention. Some players who get easily frustrated might find it discouraging to have to keep replaying the same levels over and over again. But I was just having so much fun playing the game that retrying a zone a couple times didn't bug me too much. I also feel that this regression creates a lot more tension in the boss fights, and really raises the stakes, making it more satisfying when you finally beat one and are one zone closer to fighting the Necrodancer. Another reason that I didn't mind retreading zones is that their layout is randomly generated every time you play them. So zone 2 level 1 still feels fresh even though I'm attempting it for the 7th time in a row. However, Crypt of the Necrodancer, I think, effectively utilizes the concept of randomly generated levels in several other ways as well. First off, it provides the player with a shovel that they can use to break through walls. This even further opens up exploration in the game's levels and perfectly puts the impetus of discovery in the hands of you, the player, to experience at your own pace. See, on one hand, the more you explore, the more loot you might collect and the stronger you might become. But, for more inexperienced players, lengthy exploration can often result in health loss and having to prematurely waste valuable healing items. You have to decide how much you want to risk exploring before moving down to the next level. Also, as with every great dungeon in history, the caves and crypts in this game are littered with random traps that perfectly complement its gameplay. Like buttons that you can step on that speed up or slow down the rhythm of the music as well as pads which bounce you in a particular direction, which can throw off a novice's rhythm, but which can be used by skillful players to outmaneuver hard-to-hit enemies. Now, you know that item shop merchant that I mentioned earlier? Well, one final nuance of the game's exploration that I really appreciate is that he sings the chorus of the level's theme, and his singing gets louder the closer you get to him. Now, I could see some people finding his voice a little annoying, though I found it charming, but either way, it's ultimately a very useful tool for locating the item shop in any given level. And I think it's an even more brilliant touch because it feels so naturally integrated into the game's world. So there's a lot of ways that Crypt of the Necrodancer maximizes the potential of its random level design. And one of the game's greatest strengths is that replaying levels 2, 5, or even 11 times is still so much fun. Before I continue with my primary points, I'd like to briefly mention how much I quite enjoy this game's sense of humor, particularly in the naming conventions of its songs, which are all charming bits of wordplay like Rhythm Mortis or Night to C Sharp, as well as its boss names like Coral Riff or King Conga. And the other monsters also have delightfully musically punny names, but I unfortunately don't have time to mention all of those. <laughs> I'd now like to discuss yeah, the game's narrative. It's basic but heartfelt, and it shows that you don't need an overly complex story to feel an emotional connection to the protagonist that keeps you playing. In the beginning, it's the foolhardy eagerness that you share with Cadence, unaware of the many challenges that lie in store. Then, later into the game, you sympathize with Cadence over the loss of her mother and are curious as to why her father left, although the golden loot actually being a golden loot was a laughably predictable plot twist given the game's general musical theming. I even guessed pretty early on, since the Necrodancer used the loot to resurrect Cadence at the beginning of the game, her father may have gone into the dungeon to try to get that same loot to bring her mother back, which ended up being the case, although I hadn't guessed that the 
penultimate boss, Dead Ringer, was actually Cadence's father under the Necrodancer's control, so that was a nice surprise. And it became an even more cathartic twist when, after you beat him in a super hard boss fight which took me many attempts, you free him and team up for the ultimate Necrodancer Smackdown! And I mean seriously, by the time you two fight the Necrodancer, you're so loaded up with powerful loot that it's a satisfyingly one-sided fight. Then you beat him and use the golden loot to resurrect your dead mother. And there you go, a nice, short, simple little story that doesn't have too much going on. Or weird micro-aliens. <coughs> Chibi Robo! <coughs> Whew. Oh man, I'm sorry. I don't know what made me cough in such a long and convoluted way. Must be the air in here. Anyway, my point here is that I like how simple and unobtrusive Crypt of the Necrodancer's plot is. It's a tasty topping to the frozen yogurt that is the rest of the game. And I fucking love frozen yogurt. Now, if the plot is Necrodancer's metaphorical toppings, then its music is the game's milk. That's to say, if you tried to replace this game's soundtrack with coconut milk, it'd sound like shit. The music in this game kicks ass, and I absolutely love it. Every level has a different theme, and the tunes increase in complexity and intensity as the game goes on. It perfectly complements the game's difficulty and emulates that fun old 16-bit style of game music. Actually, the 16-bit auditory aesthetic is pretty important because it lends itself to a very well-defined set of beats that are easier for a player to detect and dance to. However, on the off chance that you don't enjoy the game's soundtrack, Necrodancer offers the awesome option to import your own music tracks for levels, and even set your own custom beat if you're feeling really crazy. The only odd thing about this feature is that the game's sound effects are still 16-bit, so high-quality music sounds a little out of place. Now by this point, you may have noticed a common idea that weaves itself through almost every facet of this game, which is player choice. Crypt of the Necrodancer grants players an insane degree of choice and agency, even down to the way they play the game. Now for me, I played it on my PC using a PlayStation 4 controller, and was easily able to change the game's controls to play however I felt was the most comfortable. But I could have also used my keyboard, an Xbox One controller, or even a dance pad. But the choices run even deeper than that. It's in the characters that you get to choose, that all have their own play gimmicks. It's in the gear that you choose to keep in your item pool, the items that you choose to bring with you into the dungeon, and even in how much you want to explore the dungeon before moving down to the next level. Choices flowing through this game's veins like water through the Titanic! It's everywhere! So much choice! So much choice! <laughs> So in conclusion, I would rate Crypt of the Necrodancer a perfect 100, because it is a perfectly crafted game. Each intricate system perfectly supports the overall design, and not a single second of my playtime felt wasted on unimportant or unnecessary bullshit. Additionally, I absolutely love how the game encourages players to play it their own way with the wide level of choice that it provides in the control device they use, items they select, and character they play with. It's gaming at its finest, and most importantly, it's fun! Thank you everyone for watching this review. If you liked it, then rhythmically tap that like button to this beat and subscribe for more gaming goodness. And if you've got your own thoughts on Crypt of the Necrodancer or another game, let me know in the comments below. Much love and respect, James C. Drone, signing off.